The design research has a focus on the exploitation of the byproducts of meat industries. Huge amounts of waste are generated in contemporary industrial meat production. These mainly include skin, bones, tendons, internal organs and blood. These waste products have limited use in the food industry. Most often, these byproducts are discarded as waste. There is a drive to challenge current perceptions of organic waste and to repurpose these byproducts into attractive construction materials. A gelatin-based material is derived from animal byproducts like skin, bones and tendons and by using the advances of jet binder technology, a structure is formed and shaped in the desert environment as a landscape remediation program. This technique can stabilize desert sand particles and therefore can transform the arid environment for potential agricultural yield. The design proposal will emerge through a synergetic process of the digitally fabricated inhabitable space and the sand formation of the desert landscape, highlighting coexistence of the built and the natural environment. The protein-based material is designed to naturally decompose, adopting a dust-to-dust -dust life cycle logic to pursue a symbiotic relationship with nature. Due to the material's biodegradability, when they come to the end of their useful life, they could be reintegrated into the soil, thus becoming part of a circular process which does not contribute to landfill sites. Dust to Dust is a material system that recycles and reuses meat byproducts. It is looking for an alternative to the use of finite resources as construction materials. Gelatin is extracted from meat waste to develop the protein-based material. In order to test this process, we have firstly collected discarded pork skin and beef bones from the butcher shop and then extracted the gelatin by boiling. We then recovered the waste vegetable oil from a fried fish restaurant in order to produce glycerin. We mixed the gelatin solution and the glycerin in specific quantities in order to test iterations of the new material. Glycerin acts as a plasticizer by weakening the intermolecular bonds in the gelatin substance. As a result, glycerin can increase the flexibility of the resulting material. The mixture dehydrates and hardens according to the shape of the mold forming a light yellow translucent solid. This material can change its color and hardness through pigments. We have tried to use mineral pigments in order to achieve a stiffer surface and clearer organic patterns. Different shaped molds can then be used to define the form and texture of the resulting object. High flexibility is a key property. The flexibility of the material is dependent on changes in air temperature and heat melting and flattening as the temperature rises, curing and shrinking when cooled. Because of its shrinkage properties, the shaping and folding applied to soft materials can be maintained until the material is fully dehydrated and hardened. Although the material will melt at high temperature, it is not soluble in water. The material becomes softer and loses its rigidity in water, but it does not dissolve. The variability in the properties of the material could be a challenge in terms of developing its use in design structures. Alternatively, we could imagine this material with its constantly changing state as a new architectural language. A building like a second skin, breathing, growing and shrinking as we humans do. If we adapt to this material language, we could speculate on an alternative future when the architecture is constantly regenerating within the system of a circular economy. 3D printing could be a tool to harness this material that changes state so easily, in order to be able to produce complex geometries that are imaginable in the real-life construction industry. Before the robot arm prints, we did a series of manual tests by using the needle tube. The conclusion of the manual test is that the potato starch can increase the strength of the gelatin binder. Sand as an aggregate can support the material while printing and it can also absorb moisture. High strength models often consist of high density textures. Injection printing will reduce the material bleeding. Therefore, we have developed a fabrication process that it is based on injecting the gelatin binder in a bed of aggregate. Once the binder is fully cured, we remove the aggregates. 
We use sand as the aggregates while the binder dries. The robotic arm is used to print the gelatin binder. We precisely controlled the geometry, size and thickness of the structure by adjusting the movement, position or speed of the robot arm. We wanted a product that had control processes and defined outcomes. Whilst maintaining control and predictability of the construction of the product, we also allowed for the free bleeding of material in the sand and the natural shrinkage of the model after drying. The result of the research has illustrated that it was practically impossible to print two perfectly comparable objects. With this conclusion, we used the unpredictable nature of the material to drive the design of the following structures, which challenges conventional design parameters. Thinking in variables rather than in absolute figures emphasizes the potential to change. This radical and unpredictable condition of chance is critical and deeply social, placing emphasis on how buildings perform rather than how they appear as finished objects. This is the focus of our design. The site is at the junction of the Dunhuang city and the desert. Due to its position near the eastern edge of the Taklamakan desert, the ground surface is covered with a large area of quicksand. Sand dunes up to 142 meters high bring great oppression to the city. Animal husbandry has always been one of the main economies in Dunhuang. It is appropriate for the unique natural conditions and suits the living conditions of the nomadic communities that occupy the desert. However, overgrazing has led to land desertification and sandstorms. The vegetation on the pastures is gradually disappearing, but the number of cattle and sheep is increasing. In recent years, the carcasses of dead animals have been used only for edible meat. The skin, bones and other internal organs are discarded in the landfill. Dust to Dust proposes a landscape remediation program between a meat processing plant and the desert. The animal waste from animal husbandry is repurposed into gelatin. This binder is used to produce components used in structures that sit in desert and act as landscape control for increasing sandstorms. The design of the construction site is driven by the movement of the sand dunes. The movement direction of the dunes in the past two decades has pointed out three sandstorm-heavy disaster areas in the neighboring cities. On this basis, we conducted a sand simulation test and found that the L-shaped staggered building structure can effectively slow down the speed of sand movement. In addition, the interior is grotto-like, a materiality resulting from the unpredictable nature of the construction process. It draws reference from the Mogao Krotos. The animal visceral was abstracted into architectural language and we varied pattern density to determine sun formation and the qualities of inhabitable space. This pattern forms an arched geometry which is revealed as the sun blows away. By changing the density of the surface pattern, we let part of the quick sand pass through the building to form new sand dunes behind the structure or to block part of the movement of the sand and deposit it inside the building to form a new kind of space. Binder jetting technology is essential in this design process. We can also speculate on the use of a self-driving track that can extrude directly in the landscape following satellite information regarding desert sand drift. This protein-based organic material is formed and shaped in the desert environment. The sand adheres the surface of the material to help control and slow the movement of sand. This architectural language slows the destruction of the landscape. The structures overlap in a semi-enclosed community-style layout. The architecture is visible to visitors from far away in the dusty landscape. It is a civic beacon indicating a new type of construction that directly affects the community that live there. These prototypes consist of our initial experiments for the design language exploration and its corresponding spatial outcome. More digital design language tests were performed in order to imagine the design potential of the material through more volumetric geometries. The design space is being constantly degraded and then remolded by people and environment. It sits in whilst actively affecting a negative environmental phenomenon, sandstorms. It is a constantly changing architecture that reflects the changing land around it. Cradle to cradle and dust to dust, this structure is a physical representation of a future 
that operates within the framework of a circular economy. It illustrates the challenges that arise with this way of work and offers solutions both in material and architectural terms.